Have you ever held a question in mind for so long that it becomes part of how you think? Have you ever held a question in mind for so long that it becomes part of how you think? Have you ever held a question in mind for so long that it becomes part of how you think? Maybe even part of who you are as a person? Maybe even part of who you are as a person? Maybe even part of who you are as a person? Well, I've had a question in my mind for many, many years, and that is, well, I've had a question in my mind for many, many years, and that is, well, I've had a question in my mind for many, many years, and that is, how can you speed up learning? How can you speed up learning? How can you speed up learning? Now, this is an interesting question because if you speed up learning, you can spend less time at school. Now, this is an interesting question because if you speed up learning, you can spend less time at school. Now, this is an interesting question because if you speed up learning, you can spend less time at school. And if you learn really fast, and if you learn really fast, and if you learn really fast, you probably wouldn't have to go to school at all. You probably wouldn't have to go to school at all. You probably wouldn't have to go to school at all. Now, when I was young, now, when I was young, now, when I was young, yeah, school was sort of okay, but uh, I found quite often that school got in the way of learning. Yeah, school was sort of okay, but uh, I found quite often that school got in the way of learning. Yeah, school was sort of okay, but uh, I found quite often that school got in the way of learning. So I had this question in mind, how do you learn faster? So I had this question in mind, how do you learn faster? So I had this question in mind, how do you learn faster? And this began when I was very, very young. And this began when I was very, very young. And this began when I was very, very young. When I was 11 years old, when I was 11 years old, when I was 11 years old, I wrote a letter to researchers in the Soviet Union asking about hypnopedia. This is sleep learning. I wrote a letter to researchers in the Soviet Union asking about hypnopedia. This is sleep learning. I wrote a letter to researchers in the Soviet Union asking about hypnopedia. This is sleep learning where you get a tape recorder, you put it beside your bed, where you get a tape recorder, you put it beside your bed, where you get a tape recorder, you put it beside your bed, and it turns on in the middle of the night when you're sleeping, and it turns on in the middle of the night when you're sleeping, and it turns on in the middle of the night when you're sleeping, And you're supposed to be learning from this. And you're supposed to be learning from this. And you're supposed to be learning from this. Uh, good idea, unfortunately, it doesn't work. Uh, good idea, unfortunately, it doesn't work. Uh, good idea, unfortunately, it doesn't work. 
But Hypnopedia did open the doors to research in other areas. But Hypnopedia did open the doors to research in other areas. But Hypnopedia did open the doors to research in other areas. And we've had incredible discoveries about learning that began with that first question. And we've had incredible discoveries about learning that began with that first question. And we've had incredible discoveries about learning that began with that first question. I went on from there to become passionate about psychology. I went on from there to become passionate about psychology. I went on from there to become passionate about psychology. And I have been involved in psychology in many different ways for the rest of my life up until this point. And I have been involved in psychology in many different ways for the rest of my life up until this point. And I have been involved in psychology in many different ways for the rest of my life up until this point. In 1981, I took myself to China. In 1981, I took myself to China. In 1981, I took myself to China. And I decided that I was going to be native level in Chinese inside two years. And I decided that I was going to be native level in Chinese inside two years. And I decided that I was going to be native level in Chinese inside two years. Now, you need to understand that in 1981, Everybody thought Chinese was really, really difficult. Now, you need to understand that in 1981, everybody thought Chinese was really, really difficult. Now, you need to understand that in 1981, everybody thought Chinese was really, really difficult. And that a Westerner could study for 10 years or more and never really get very good at it and that a Westerner could study for 10 years or more and never really get very good at it. And that a Westerner could study for 10 years or more and never really get very good at it. And I also went in with a different idea, which was... And I also went in with a different idea, which was... And I also went in with a different idea, which was... taking all of the conclusions from psychological research up to that point and applying them to the learning process. Taking all of the conclusions from psychological research up to that point and applying them to the learning process. Taking all of the conclusions from psychological research up to that point and applying them to the learning process. What was really cool was that in six months I was fluent in, in Mandarin Chinese and it took a little bit longer to get up to native. What was really cool was that in six months I was fluent in, in Mandarin Chinese and it took a little bit longer to get up to native. What was really cool was that in six months I was fluent in, in Mandarin Chinese and it took a little bit longer to get up to native. But I looked around, but I looked around, but I looked around, and I saw all of these people from different countries struggling terribly with Chinese. I saw Chinese people struggling terribly to learn English and other languages. And I saw all of these people from different countries struggling terribly with Chinese. I saw Chinese people struggling terribly to learn English and other languages. And I saw all of these people from different countries struggling terribly with Chinese. I saw Chinese people struggling terribly to learn English and other languages. And so my question got refined down to 
And so my question got refined down to And so my question got refined down to How can you help a normal adult learn a new language quickly, easily and effectively? How can you help a normal adult learn a new language quickly, easily and effectively? How can you help a normal adult learn a new language quickly, easily and effectively? Now this is a really, really important question in today's world. Now this is a really, really important question in today's world. Now this is a really, really important question in today's world. We have massive challenges with environment. We have massive challenges with social dislocation, with wars, all sorts of things going on. We have massive challenges with environment. We have massive challenges with social dislocation, with wars, all sorts of things going on. We have massive challenges with environment. We have massive challenges with social dislocation, with wars, all sorts of things going on. And if we can't communicate, we're really going to have difficulty solving these problems. And if we can't communicate, we're really going to have difficulty solving these problems. And if we can't communicate, we're really going to have difficulty solving these problems. So we need to be able to speak each other's languages. So we need to be able to speak each other's languages. So we need to be able to speak each other's languages. This is really, really important. This is really, really important. This is really, really important. The question is, how do you do that? The question is, how do you do that? The question is, how do you do that? Well, it's actually really easy. Well, it's actually really easy. Well, it's actually really easy. You look around for people who can already do it. You look around for people who can already do it. You look around for people who can already do it. You look for situations where it's already working. You look for situations where it's already working. You look for situations where it's already working. And then you identify the principles and apply them. And then you identify the principles and apply them. And then you identify the principles and apply them. It's called modeling, and I've been looking at language learning and modeling language learning for about 15 to 20 years now. It's called modeling, and I've been looking at language learning and modeling language learning for about 15 to 20 years now. It's called modeling, and I've been looking at language learning and modeling language learning for about 15 to 20 years now. And my conclusion, my observation from this is that any adult can learn a second language to fluency inside six months. And my conclusion, my observation from this is that any adult can learn a second language to fluency inside six months. And my conclusion, my observation from this is that any adult can learn a second language to fluency inside six months. Now when I say this, now when I say this, now when I say this, most people think I'm crazy. This is not possible. Most people think I'm crazy. This is not possible. Most people think I'm crazy. This is not possible. So let me remind everybody of the history of human progress. It's all about expanding our limits. So let me remind everybody 
of the history of human progress. It's all about expanding our limits. So let me remind everybody of the history of human progress. It's all about expanding our limits. In 1950, everybody believed that running one mile in four minutes was impossible. In 1950, everybody believed that running one mile in four minutes was impossible. In 1950, everybody believed that running one mile in four minutes was impossible. And then Roger Bannister did it in 1956, and from there it's got shorter and shorter. And then Roger Bannister did it in 1956, and from there it's got shorter and shorter. And then Roger Bannister did it in 1956, and from there it's got shorter and shorter. A hundred years ago, everybody believed that heavy stuff doesn't fly. A hundred years ago, everybody believed that heavy stuff doesn't fly. A hundred years ago, everybody believed that heavy stuff doesn't fly. Except it does, and we all know this. Except it does, and we all know this. Except it does, and we all know this. How does heavy stuff fly? How does heavy stuff fly? How does heavy stuff fly? We reorganize the material using principles that we have learned from observing nature, birds in this case. We reorganize the material using principles that we have learned from observing nature, birds in this case. We reorganize the material using principles that we have learned from observing nature, birds in this case. And today, we've gone even further. And today, we've gone even further. And today, we've gone even further. So, you can fly a car. So, you can fly a car. So, you can fly a car. You can buy one of these for a couple of hundred thousand US dollars. You can buy one of these for a couple of hundred thousand US dollars. You can buy one of these for a couple of hundred thousand US dollars. We now have cars in the world that fly. We now have cars in the world that fly. We now have cars in the world that fly. And there's a different way to fly which we learn from squirrels. And there's a different way to fly which we learn from squirrels. And there's a different way to fly which we learn from squirrels. So all you need to do is copy what a flying squirrel does, build a suit called a wingsuit, and off you go, you can fly like a squirrel. So all you need to do is copy what a flying squirrel does, build a suit called a wingsuit, and off you go, you can fly like a squirrel. So all you need to do is copy what a flying squirrel does, build a suit called a wingsuit, and off you go, you can fly like a squirrel. Now, most people, a lot of people, I wouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people think they can't draw. Now, most people, a lot of people, I wouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people think they can't draw. Now, most people, a lot of people, I wouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people think they can't draw. However, there are some key principles, five principles that you can apply to learning to draw, and you can actually learn to draw in five days. However, there are some key principles, five principles that you can apply to learning to draw, and you can actually learn to draw in five days. However, there are some key principles, five principles that you can apply to learning to draw, and you can actually learn to draw in five days. So, if you draw like this, so, if you draw like this, 
So if you draw like this, you learn these principles for five days and apply them. You learn these principles for five days and apply them. You learn these principles for five days and apply them. And after five days, you can draw something like this. And after five days, you can draw something like this. And after five days, you can draw something like this. Now, I know this is true because that was my first drawing, and after five days of uh, applying these principles, that was what I was able to do. Now, I know this is true because that was my first drawing, and after five days of uh, applying these principles, that was what I was able to do. Now, I know this is true because that was my first drawing, and after five days of uh, applying these principles, that was what I was able to do. And I looked at this and I went, wow! And I looked at this and I went, wow! And I looked at this and I went, wow! So that's how I look like when I'm concentrating so intensely that my brain is exploding. So that's how I look like when I'm concentrating so intensely that my brain is exploding. So that's how I look like when I'm concentrating so intensely that my brain is exploding. So anybody can learn to draw in five days. So anybody can learn to draw in five days. So Anybody can learn to draw in five days. And in the same way, with the same logic, anybody can learn a second language in six months. And in the same way, with the same logic, anybody can learn a second language in six months. And in the same way, with the same logic, anybody can learn a second language in six months. How? 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 There are five principles and seven actions. There are five principles and seven actions. There are five principles and seven actions. There may be a few more, but these are absolutely core. There may be a few more, but these are absolutely core. There may be a few more, but these are absolutely core. And before I get into those, I just want to talk about two myths. I want to dispel two myths. And before I get into those, I just want to talk about two myths. I want to dispel two myths. And before I get into those, I just want to talk about two myths. I want to dispel two myths. The first is that you need talent. The first is that you need talent. The first is that you need talent. Let me tell you about Zoe. Let me tell you about Zoe. Let me tell you about Zoe. Zoe came from Australia, went to Holland, was trying to learn Dutch. Zoe came from Australia, went to Holland, was trying to learn Dutch. Zoe came from Australia, went to Holland, was trying to learn Dutch. Struggling extremely, extremely, a great deal. And finally, you know, people were saying, you're completely useless, you, you, you're, you're, you're not talented, give up, you're a waste of time. Struggling extremely, extremely, a great deal, and finally, you know, people were saying you're completely useless. You, you, you're, you're, you're not talented. Give up. You're a waste of time. Struggling extremely, extremely, a great deal, and finally, you know, people were saying you're completely useless. You, you, you're, you're, you're not talented. Give up. You're a waste of time. And she was very, very depressed. And she was very, very depressed. And she was very, very depressed. And then she came across these five principles. And then she came across these five principles. 
And then she came across these five principles. She moved to Brazil. She moved to Brazil. She moved to Brazil. And she applied them, and in six months she was fluent in Portuguese. And she applied them, and in six months she was fluent in Portuguese. And she applied them, and in six months she was fluent in Portuguese. So talent doesn't matter. So talent doesn't matter. So talent doesn't matter. People also think that immersion in a new country is the way to learn a language. People also think that immersion in a new country is the way to learn a language. People also think that immersion in a new country is the way to learn a language. But look around Hong Kong. Look at all the Westerners who've been here for 10 years who don't speak a word of Chinese. But look around Hong Kong. Look at all the Westerners who've been here for 10 years who don't speak a word of Chinese. But look around Hong Kong. Look at all the Westerners who've been here for 10 years who don't speak a word of Chinese. Look at all the Chinese living in America, Britain, Australia, Canada, who've been there 10, 20 years and they don't speak any English. Look at all the Chinese living in America, Britain, Australia, Canada, who've been there 10, 20 years and they don't speak any English. Look at all the Chinese living in America, Britain, Australia, Canada, who've been there 10, 20 years and they don't speak any English. Immersion per se does not work. Immersion per se does not work. Immersion per se does not work. Why? Because a drowning man cannot learn to swim. Why? Because a drowning man cannot learn to swim. Why? Because a drowning man cannot learn to swim. When you don't speak a language, you're like a baby, and if you drop yourself into a context which is all adults talking about stuff over your head, when you don't speak a language, you're like a baby, and if you drop yourself into a context which is all adults talking about stuff over your head, when you don't speak a language, you're like a baby, and if you drop yourself into a context which is all adults talking about stuff over your head, you won't learn. You won't learn. You won't learn. So, what are the five principles that you need to pay attention to first? So, what are the five principles that you need to pay attention to first? So, what are the five principles that you need to pay attention to first? The four words. Attention, meaning, relevance, and memory. And these inter interconnect in very, very important ways. There are four words. Attention, meaning, relevance, and memory. And these inter interconnect in very, very important ways. There are four words. Attention, meaning, relevance, and memory. And these inter interconnect in very, very important ways. Especially when you're talking about learning. Especially when you're talking about learning especially when you're talking about learning. Come with me on a journey through a forest. You go on a walk through a forest. Come with me on a journey through a forest. You go on a walk through a forest. Come with me on a journey through a forest. You go on a walk through a forest. And you see something like this. And you see something like this. And you see something like this. Little marks on a tree. Maybe you pay attention, maybe you don't. Little marks on a tree. Maybe you pay attention, maybe you don't. Little marks on a tree. Maybe you pay attention, maybe you don't. You go another 50 meters and you see this. You go another 50 meters and you see this. 
You go another 50 meters and you see this. You should be paying attention. You should be paying attention. You should be paying attention. Another 50 meters, if you haven't been paying attention, you see this. Another 50 meters, if you haven't been paying attention, you see this. Another 50 meters, if you haven't been paying attention, you see this. And at this point, you're paying attention. And at this point, you're paying attention. And at this point, you're paying attention. And you've just learned that this is important, it's relevant, because it means this. And you've just learned that this is important, it's relevant, because it means this. And you've just learned that this is important, it's relevant, because it means this. And anything that is related, any information related to your survival is stuff that you're going to pay attention to and therefore you're going to remember it. And anything that is related, any information related to your survival is stuff that you're going to pay attention to and therefore you're going to remember it. And anything that is related, any information related to your survival is stuff that you're going to pay attention to and therefore you're going to remember it. If it's related to your own personal goals, if it's related to your own personal goals, if it's related to your own personal goals, then you're going to pay attention to it. Then you're going to pay attention to it. Then you're going to pay attention to it. It's relevant. It's relevant. It's relevant. You're going to remember it. You're going to remember it. You're going to remember it. So, the first rule, first principle for learning a language is focus on language content that is relevant to you. So, the first rule, first principle for learning a language is focus on language content that is relevant to you. So, the first rule, first principle for learning a language is focus on language content that is relevant to you. Which brings us to tools. Which brings us to tools. Which brings us to tools. We master tools by using tools. We master tools by using tools. We master tools by using tools. And we learn tools the fastest. And we learn tools the fastest. And we learn tools the fastest. When they're relevant to us. When they're relevant to us. When they're relevant to us. So let me share a story. So let me share a story. So let me share a story. A keyboard is a tool. A keyboard is a tool. A keyboard is a tool. Typing Chinese a certain way. There are methods for this. Typing Chinese a certain way. There are methods for this. Typing Chinese a certain way, there are methods for this. That's a tool. That's a tool. That's a tool. I had a colleague many years ago who went to night school Tuesday night, Thursday night, two hours each time, practicing at home. She spent nine months. I had a colleague many years ago who Went to night school Tuesday night, Thursday night, two hours each time, practicing at home. She spent nine months. I had a colleague many years ago who 
went to night school Tuesday night, Thursday night, two hours each time, practicing at home. She spent nine months and she did not learn to type Chinese. And she did not learn to type Chinese. And she did not learn to type Chinese. And one night we had a crisis. And one night we had a crisis. And one night we had a crisis. We had 48 hours to deliver a training manual in Chinese. We had 48 hours to deliver a training manual in Chinese. We had 48 hours to deliver a training manual in Chinese. And she got the job, and I can guarantee you. And she got the job, and I can guarantee you. And she got the job, and I can guarantee you. In 48 hours, she learned to type Chinese because it was relevant, it was meaningful, it was important. She was using a tool to create value. In 48 hours, she learned to type Chinese because it was relevant, it was meaningful, it was important. She was using a tool to create value. In 48 hours, she learned to type Chinese because it was relevant, it was meaningful, it was important. She was using a tool to create value. So the second principle for learning a language is to use your language as a tool to communicate right from day one. So the second principle for learning a language is to use your language as a tool to communicate right from day one. So the second principle for learning a language is to use your language as a tool to communicate right from day one. As a kid does. As a kid does. As a kid does. When I first arrived in China, I didn't speak a word of Chinese. When I first arrived in China, I didn't speak a word of Chinese. When I first arrived in China, I didn't speak a word of Chinese. And on my second week, I got to take a train ride overnight. And on my second week, I got to take a train ride overnight. And on my second week, I got to take a train ride overnight. I spent eight hours sitting in the dining car talking to one of the guards on the train. He took an interest in me for some reason. I spent eight hours sitting in the dining car talking to one of the guards on the train. He took an interest in me for some reason. I spent eight hours sitting in the dining car talking to one of the guards on the train. He took an interest in me for some reason. And we just chatted all night in Chinese. And he was drawing pictures and making movements with his hands and facial expressions. And, and we just chatted all night in Chinese. And he was drawing pictures and making movements with his hands and facial expressions. And... and we just chatted all night in Chinese and he was drawing pictures and making movements with his hands and facial expressions and piece by piece by piece I understood more and more. Piece by piece by piece I understood more and more. Piece by piece by piece I understood more and more. It was really cool. It was really cool. It was really cool. It was two weeks later when people were talking Chinese around me. I was understanding some of this and I hadn't even made any effort to learn that. It was two weeks later when people were talking Chinese around me. I was understanding some of this and I hadn't even made any effort to learn that. It was two weeks later when people were talking Chinese around me, I was understanding some of this, and I hadn't even made any effort to learn that. What had happened, I'd absorbed it that night on the train, which brings us to the third principle. What had happened, I'd absorbed it that night on the train, which brings us to the third principle. What had happened, I'd absorbed it that night on the train, which brings us to the third principle. When you first understand the message, 
When you first understand the message, when you first understand the message, then you will acquire the language unconsciously. Then you will acquire the language unconsciously. Then you will acquire the language unconsciously. And this is really, really well documented now. It's something called comprehensible input. There's 20 or 30 years of research on this. And this is really, really well documented now. It's something called comprehensible input. There's 20 or 30 years of research on this. And this is really, really well documented now. It's something called comprehensible input. There's 20 or 30 years of research on this. Stephen Krashen, a leader in the field, has published all sorts of these different studies. Stephen Krashen, a leader in the field, has published all sorts of these different studies. Stephen Krashen, a leader in the field, has published all sorts of these different studies. And this is just from one of them. The, the purple bars show the scores on different tests for language. And this is just from one of them. The, the purple bars show the scores on different tests for language. And this is just from one of them. The, the purple bars show the scores on different tests for language. The, the purple people were people who had learned by grammar and formal study. The green ones are the ones who learn by comprehensible input. The, the purple people were people who had learned by grammar and formal study. The green ones are the ones who learn by comprehensible input. The, the purple people were people who had learned by grammar and formal study. The green ones are the ones who learn by comprehensible input. So, comprehension works. So, comprehension works. So, comprehension works. Comprehension is key. Comprehension is key. Comprehension is key. And language learning is not about accumulating lots of knowledge. And language learning is not about accumulating lots of knowledge. And language learning is not about accumulating lots of knowledge. In many, many ways, it's about physiological training. In many, many ways, it's about physiological training. In many, many ways, it's about physiological training. A woman I know from Taiwan did great in English at school. She got A grades all the way through, went through college, A grades, went to the US. A woman I know from Taiwan did great in English at school. She got A grades all the way through, went through college, A grades, went to the US. A woman I know from Taiwan did great in English at school. She got A grades all the way through, went through college, A grades, went to the US. And found she couldn't understand what people were saying. And found she couldn't understand what people were saying. And found she couldn't understand what people were saying. And people starting us started asking her, are you deaf? And people starting us started asking her, "Are you deaf?" And people starting us started asking her, "Are you deaf?" And she was. And she was. And she was. English deaf. English deaf. English deaf. Because we have filters in our brain that filter in the sounds, 
that we are familiar with, and they filter out the sounds of languages that we're not. Because we have filters in our brain that filter in the sounds that we are familiar with, and they filter out the sounds of languages that we're not. Because we have filters in our brain that filter in the sounds that we are familiar with, and they filter out the sounds of languages that we're not. And if you can't hear it, you won't understand it. If you can't understand it, you're not going to learn it. And if you can't hear it, you won't understand it. If you can't understand it, you're not going to learn it. And if you can't hear it, you won't understand it. If you can't understand it, you're not going to learn it. So you actually have to be able to hear these sounds. So you actually have to be able to hear these sounds. So you actually have to be able to hear these sounds. And you, there are ways to do that. And you, there are ways to do that. And you, there are ways to do that. But it's physiological training. But it's physiological training. But it's physiological training. Speaking takes muscle. Speaking takes muscle. Speaking takes muscle. You've got 43 muscles in your face. You've got 43 muscles in your face. You've got 43 muscles in your face. You have to coordinate those in a way that you make sounds that other people will understand. You have to coordinate those in a way that you make sounds that other people will understand. You have to coordinate those in a way that you make sounds that other people will understand. If you've ever done a new sport for a couple of days and you know how your body feels, if you've ever done a new sport for a couple of days and you know how your body feels, if you've ever done a new sport for a couple of days and you know how your body feels, Hurts, hurts, hurts. If your face is hurting, you're doing it right. If your face is hurting, you're doing it right. If your face is hurting, you're doing it right. And the final principle is state, psychophysiological state. And the final principle is state, psychophysiological state. And the final principle is state, psychophysiological state. If you're sad, angry, worried, upset, you're not going to learn, period. If you're sad, angry, worried, upset, you're not going to learn, period. If you're sad, angry, worried, upset, you're not going to learn, period. If you're happy, relaxed, in an alpha brain state, curious, you're going to learn really quickly. If you're happy, relaxed, in an alpha brain state, curious, you're going to learn really quickly. If you're happy, relaxed, in an alpha brain state, curious, you're going to learn really quickly. And very specifically, you need to be tolerant of ambiguity. And very specifically, you need to be tolerant of ambiguity. And very specifically, you need to be tolerant of ambiguity. If you're one of those people who needs to understand 100% every word you're hearing, if you're one of those people who needs to understand 100% every word you're hearing, if you're one of those people who needs to understand 100% every word you're hearing, you will go nuts because you'll be incredibly upset all the time because you're not perfect. 
You will go nuts because you'll be incredibly upset all the time because you're not perfect. You will go nuts because you'll be incredibly upset all the time because you're not perfect. If you're comfortable with getting some, not getting some, just paying attention to what you do understand, you're going to be fine, you'll be relaxed, and you'll be learning quickly. If you're comfortable with getting some, not getting some, just paying attention to what you do understand, you're going to be fine, you'll be relaxed, and you'll be learning quickly. If you're comfortable with getting some, not getting some, just paying attention to what you do understand, you're going to be fine, you'll be relaxed, and you'll be learning quickly. So based on those five principles, what are the seven actions that you take? So based on those five principles, what are the seven actions that you take? So based on those five principles, what are the seven actions that you take? Number one, listen a lot. Number one, listen a lot. Number one, listen a lot. I call it brain soaking. I call it brain soaking. I call it brain soaking. You put yourself in a context where you're hearing tons and tons and tons of the language. You put yourself in a context where you're hearing tons and tons and tons of the language. You put yourself in a context where you're hearing tons and tons and tons of the language. And it doesn't matter if you understand it or not. And it doesn't matter if you understand it or not. And it doesn't matter if you understand it or not. You're listening to the rhythms. You're listening to patterns that repeat. You're listening to things that stand out. You're listening to the rhythms. You're listening to patterns that repeat. You're listening to things that stand out. You're listening to the rhythms. You're listening to patterns that repeat. You're listening to things that stand out. Ponards it. Ponards it. Ponards it. So just soak your brain in this. So just soak your brain in this. So just soak your brain in this. The second action. The second action. The second action is you get the meaning first even before you get the words. Is you get the meaning first even before you get the words. Is you Get the meaning first, even before you get the words. And you go, well, how do I do that? And you go, well, how do I do that? And you go, well, how do I do that? I don't know the words. Well, you understand what these different postures mean. I don't know the words. Well, you understand what these different postures mean. I don't know the words. Well, you understand what these different postures mean. Human communication is body language in many, many ways. So much body language. Human communication is body language in many, many ways. So much body language. Human communication is body language in many, many ways. So much body language. From body language, you can understand a lot of communication. From body language, you can understand a lot of communication. From body language, you can understand a lot of communication. Therefore, your understanding you're acquiring through comprehensible input. Therefore, your understanding you're acquiring through comprehensible input. Therefore, your understanding you're acquiring through comprehensible input. And you can also use patterns that you already know. And you can also use patterns that you already know. And you can also use patterns that you already know. 
If you're a Chinese speaker of Mandarin and Cantonese and you go to Vietnam, if you're a Chinese speaker of Mandarin and Cantonese and you go to Vietnam, if you're a Chinese speaker of Mandarin and Cantonese and you go to Vietnam, you will understand 60% of what they say to you in daily conversation because Vietnamese is about 30% Mandarin, 30% Cantonese. You will understand 60% of what they say to you in daily conversation because Vietnamese is about 30% Mandarin, 30% Cantonese. You will understand 60% of what they say to you in daily conversation because Vietnamese is about 30% Mandarin, 30% Cantonese. The third action, start mixing. The third action, start mixing. The third action, start mixing. You probably have never thought of this, but if you've got 10 verbs, 10 nouns, and 10 adjectives, you can say 1,000 different things. You probably have never thought of this, but if you've got 10 verbs, 10 nouns, and 10 adjectives, you can say 1,000 different things. You probably have never thought of this, but if you've got 10 verbs, 10 nouns, and 10 adjectives, you can say 1,000 different things. Right? Language is a creative process. Right? Language is a creative process. Right? Language is a creative process. What do babies do? What do babies do? What do babies do? Okay, me, but, now. Okay, me, but, now. Okay, me, but, now. Okay, that's how they communicate. Okay, that's how they communicate. Okay, that's how they communicate. So start mixing, get creative, have fun with it. So start mixing, get creative, have fun with it. So start mixing, get creative, have fun with it. It doesn't have to be perfect, just has to work. It doesn't have to be perfect, just has to work. It doesn't have to be perfect, just has to work. And you, when you're doing this, you focus on the core. And you, when you're doing this, you focus on the core. And you, when you're doing this, you focus on the core. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, with every language, there's high-frequency content. In English, 1,000 words covers 85% of anything you're ever going to say in daily communication. Well, with every language, there's high-frequency content. In English, 1,000 words covers 85% of anything you're ever going to say in daily communication. Well, with every language, there's high-frequency content. In English, 1,000 words covers 85% of anything you're ever going to say in daily communication. 3,000 words gives you 98% of anything you're going to say in daily conversation. 3,000 words gives you 98% of anything you're going to say in daily conversation. 3,000 words gives you 98% of anything you're going to say in daily conversation. You've got 3,000 words, you're speaking the language, the rest is, is icing on the cake. You've got 3,000 words, you're speaking the language, the rest is, is icing on the cake. You've got 3,000 words, you're speaking the language, the rest is, is icing on the cake. And when you're just beginning with a new language, start with your toolbox, week number one. And when you're just beginning with a new language, start with your toolbox, week number one. 
and when you're just beginning with a new language, start with your toolbox. Week number one. In your new language, you say things like, in your new language, you say things like, in your new language, you say things like, How do you say that? I don't understand. Repeat that, please. What does that mean? How do you say that? I don't understand. Repeat that, please. What does that mean? How do you say that? I don't understand. Repeat that, please. What does that mean? All in your target language. You're using it as a tool, making it useful to you. It's relevant to learn other things about the language. All in your target language. You're using it as a tool, making it useful to you. It's relevant to learn other things about the language. All in your target language. You're using it as a tool, making it useful to you. It's relevant to learn other things about the language. By week two, you should be saying things like, by week two, you should be saying things like, by week two, you should be saying things like me, this, you, that, give, you know, hot, simple pronouns, simple nouns, simple verbs, simple adjectives, communicating like a baby. Me, this, you, that, give, you know, hot, simple pronouns, simple nouns, simple verbs, simple adjectives, communicating like a baby. Me, this, you, that, give, you know, hot, simple pronouns, simple nouns, simple verbs, simple adjectives, communicating like a baby. By the third or fourth week, you're getting into what I call glue words. By the third or fourth week, you're getting into what I call glue words. By the third or fourth week, you're getting into what I call glue words. Although, but, therefore, these are logical transformers that tie bits of a language together, allowing you to make more complex meaning. Although, but, therefore, these are logical transformers that tie bits of a language together, allowing you to make more complex meaning. Although, but, therefore, these are logical transformers that tie bits of a language together, allowing you to make more complex meaning. At that point, you're talking. At that point, you're talking. At that point, you're talking. And when you're doing that, you should get yourself a language parent. And when you're doing that, you should get yourself a language parent. And when you're doing that, you should get yourself a language parent. If you look at how children and parents interact, you understand what this means. <clears throat> if you look at how children and parents interact, you understand what this means. <clears throat> if you look at how children and parents interact, you understand what this means. When a child is speaking, when a child is speaking, when a child is speaking, It'll be using simple words, simple combinations, sometimes quite strange, sometimes very strange pronunciation. Other people from outside the family don't understand it. It'll be using simple words, simple combinations, sometimes quite strange, sometimes very strange pronunciation. Other people from outside the family don't understand it. It'll be using simple words, simple combinations, sometimes quite strange, sometimes very strange pronunciation. Other people from outside the family don't understand it. But the parents do. But the parents do. But the parents do. And so the kid has a safe environment, gets confidence. And so the kid has a safe environment, gets confidence. And so the kid has a safe environment, 
get confidence. The parents talk to the children with body language and with simple language they know the child understands. The parents talk to the children with body language and with simple language they know the child understands. The parents talk to the children with body language and with simple language they know the child understands. So you have a comprehensible input environment that's safe. So you have a comprehensible input environment that's safe. So you have a comprehensible input environment that's safe. We know it works, otherwise none of you would speak your mother tongue. We know it works, otherwise none of you would speak your mother tongue. We know it works, otherwise none of you would speak your mother tongue. So you get yourself a language parent who's somebody interested in you as a person. So you get yourself a language parent who's somebody interested in you as a person. So you get yourself a language parent who's somebody interested in you as a person who will communicate with you essentially as an equal, but pay attention to help you understand the message. Who will communicate with you essentially as an equal, but pay attention to help you understand the message. Who will communicate with you essentially as an equal, but pay attention to help you understand the message. There are four rules of a language parent. Spouses, by the way, are not very good at this, okay? There are four rules of a language parent. Spouses, by the way, are not very good at this, okay? There are four rules of a language parent. Spouses, by the way, are not very good at this, okay? But the four rules are, first of all, they will work hard to understand what you mean, even when you're way off bit. But the four rules are, first of all, they will work hard to understand what you mean, even when you're way off bit. But the four rules are, first of all, they will work hard to understand what you mean, even when you're way off bit. Secondly, they will never correct your mistakes. Secondly, they will never correct your mistakes. Secondly, they will never correct your mistakes. Thirdly, they will feed back their understanding of what you're saying so that you can respond appropriately and, and get, the, get that feedback. And then they will use words that you know. Thirdly, they will feed back their understanding of what you're saying so that you can respond appropriately and, and get, the, get that feedback. And then they will use words that you know. Thirdly, they will feed back their understanding of what you're saying so that you can respond appropriately and, and get, the, get that feedback. And then they will use words that you know. The sixth thing you have to do is copy the face. The sixth thing you have to do is copy the face. The sixth thing you have to do is copy the face. You've got to get the muscles working right so you can sound in a way that people will understand you. You've got to get the muscles working right so you can sound in a way that people will understand you. You've got to get the muscles working right so you can sound in a way that people will understand you. There's a couple of things you do. There's a couple of things you do. There's a couple of things you do. One is you, you need to hear how it feels and feel how it sounds, which means you have a feedback loop operating in your face. One is you, you need to hear how it feels and feel how it sounds, which means you have a feedback loop operating in your face. One is you, you need to hear how it feels and feel how it sounds, which means you have a feedback loop operating in your face. But ideally, if you can look at a native speaker and just observe how they use their face, let your unconscious mind absorb the rules. But ideally, if you can look at a native speaker and just observe how they use their face, let your unconscious mind absorb the rules. 
But ideally, if you can look at a native speaker and just observe how they use their face, let your unconscious mind absorb the rules, then you're going to be able to pick it up. Then you're going to be able to pick it up. Then you're going to be able to pick it up. And if you can't get a native speaker to look at, and if you can't get a native speaker to look at, and if you can't get a native speaker to look at, you can use stuff like this. You can use stuff like this. You can use stuff like this. And the final idea here, the final action you need to take is something that I call direct connect. And the final idea here, the final action you need to take is something that I call direct connect. And the final idea here, the final action you need to take is something that I call direct connect. What does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? Well, most people learning a second language. Well, most people learning a second language. Well, most people learning a second language. Sort of take the mother tongue words and the target words and go over them again and again in their mind to try and remember them. Sort of take the mother tongue words and the target words and go over them again and again in their mind to try and remember them. Sort of take the mother tongue words and the target words and go over them again and again in their mind to try and remember them. Really inefficient. Really inefficient. Really inefficient. What you need to do is realize that everything you know is an image inside your mind, it's feeling. What you need to do is realize that everything you know is an image inside your mind, it's feeling. What you need to do is realize that everything you know is an image inside your mind, it's feeling. If you talk about fire, you can smell the smoke, you can hear the, the crackling, you can see the flames. If you talk about fire, you can smell the smoke, you can hear the, the crackling, you can see the flames. If you talk about fire, you can smell the smoke, you can hear the, the crackling, you can see the flames. So what you do is you go into that imagery and all of that memory and you come out with another pathway. So I call it one, same box, different path. So what you do is you go into that imagery and all of that memory and you come out with another pathway. So I call it one, same box, different path. So what you do is you go into that imagery and all of that memory and you come out with another pathway. So I call it one, same box, different path. You come out that pathway. You come out that pathway. You come out that pathway. and you build it over time, you become more and more skilled and just connecting the new sounds to those images that you already have, and to that internal representation. And you build it over time, you become more and more skilled and just connecting the new sounds to those images that you already have, and to that internal representation. And you build it over time, you become more and more skilled and just connecting the new sounds to those images that you already have and to that internal representation. And over time you even become naturally good at that process. And over time you even become naturally good at that process. And over time you even become naturally good at that process. That becomes unconscious. So, there are five principles that you need to work with, seven actions, 
that becomes unconscious. So there are five principles that you need to work with, seven actions that becomes unconscious. So there are five principles that you need to work with, seven actions. If you do any of them, you're going to improve. And remember, these are things under your control as the learner. If you do any of them, you're going to improve. And remember, these are things under your control as the learner. If you do any of them, you're going to improve. And remember, these are things under your control as the learner. Do them all. Do them all. Do them all. You're going to be fluent in the second language in six months. You're going to be fluent in the second language in six months. You're going to be fluent in the second language in six months. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.